What's in your pockets is? Could it be lands? Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello everybody and welcome to Brawl Stars. Today I'm playing Smeagol, helpful guide. What does he guide you to? Well, he guides you to your opponent's lands. This funky little 4-2 actually is all about the ring tempting you because whenever it does, you go ahead and mill your opponent until they mill a land and you take that land and you put it into play under your control. It's a very unusual way to ramp and it only triggers when you're tempted by the ring, but Smeagol also comes with a way to be tempted by the ring. So this deck is a combination of sacrifice and pure ring temptation. Smeagol itself cares about if a creature died during your turn. So we sacrifice our things, but we also have the full suite of the Nazgul. Yes, if you liked the Nazgul and my Sauron deck, you'll love them here too, because for three mana, the ring tempts you. You get a bigger, bigger, badder Nazgul, and you get all of the benefits of Smeagol stealing your opponent's lands. This deck is very cool, and it's a very unusual, wow, there's a lot of three drops in this deck, when it comes to being a sacrifice. It's actually very hard for me. I had some trouble trying to make a balance between sacrificing things and just having the ring tempt me. I think you could build this deck with none of the Nazgul and still have it be very powerful because Golgari Sacrifice is a good archetype to have. I actually cut a lot of the good Golgari cards I oftentimes put into decks. Think Casualties of War just to make room for well, more Nazgul, okay? I like my Nazgul. A lot of the things you'll probably recognize, like Rankle, Yogmoth, these are great cards when it comes to sacrificing, but we have some newer cards too, like Old Man Willow. Who cares about the number of lands you have and who gets you lands? Smeagol gets you lands. It also lets you sacrifice creatures or tokens when you swing in with this in order to both trigger Smeagol at the end of turn and maybe kill one of your opponents, make one of their blockers worse. Skyfisher Spider similarly enters the battlefield. You can sacrifice something in order to kill something your opponent has or get rid of a non-land permanent. It's important to have some good removal for Planeswalkers when you're running a feature-based deck like this, even though being tempted by the ring makes your blockers harder to block. Um, it's very fun, and it also lets you turn some things into legendaries. Uh, I will say, if you want to build this deck with fewer cards from the new set, uh, trimming out the Nazgul, things like One Ring to Rule Them All, very much things you can do. And you can add in more of the, what I'll call, extremely powerful, versatile Planeswalkers that are in Golgari colors. Uh, I love Liliana in any sacrifice shell. Same with Garuk. Invraska is just a really good combination of win con and removal across her two pieces. If you want to add in more sacrifice pieces, adding in more Blood Artist and Blood Artist-like cards uh, is a hugely powerful way to take this deck. I, I do think, though, that you're going to have a good time. This has a good balance of removal, ring temptation, stealing lands. It's a mid-range deck if ever there were one. And it feels so satisfying to see, oh, a land from my opponent. I would love one. A lot of the lands we have in here, uh, if they are tech lands, lands that help our deck with more than just giving us mana, either make creatures when they enter the battlefield or have activated abilities that let us make an extra creature like Argoth. There's a lot more things that you can put in here. You can put in more card draw. You could make like Shouldred sort of your alternate commander too, because a lot of the ring temptation, like Call of the Ring, helps you draw cards. Whenever you have your ring bearer chosen, which is whenever you have the ring tempt you, you get to draw a card with this, you pay the two life. We have a similar thing off of Black Market Connections, which is in here to make tokens, which you can then sacrifice or just swing into battle. You don't have to sacrifice things to trigger Smeagol. You can just attack with them. And if they die, great, you're getting a land. That's a great thing to get. But Smeagol being a 4-2 means that he oftentimes can't swing in himself because he's, uh, he's a little front heavy. My man could be knocked over by a stiff breeze. And that's just fine. You don't have to be attacking with Smeagol unless your opponent only has huge creatures with more than four power and you make them into your ring bear. Please stop giving Smeagol the ring, though. He's great. Let's go into the queue and uh, take some lands. Turn one, we've got ramp. Turn two, we've got ramp. We've also got a spare golem on the side and a binding the old gods. This is a very keepable hand. And we're up against Urza, Lord Protector. This is the meld Urza, so we're going to have to keep an eye out for our opponent playing meld oh and i know what meld that they'll be playing it's the uh it's the might stone and weak stone 
Maze Mine Tome. Lots of artifacts, instants, and sorceries. We're probably going to be seeing a lot of Azorius control coming out of this deck here. Uh, I'm going to get down this Cobra, play the Llanowar Waste, generate black mana, and here comes Golem! No, not Smeagol. Golem! They're different. Sort of. Really fast way to build up the battlefield here. By the way, Delighted Halfling, still a delightful card. Include this in your creature base decks. You won't regret it. Urza on the battlefield. All my homies hate Urza. I'm the homies. I'm the one who hates Urza. Hmm, do I need some extra mana? Not really. I'm going to name black on my Forsaken Crossroads. We're going to float black mana as well. I'm going to scry here. Ooh, Ophiomancer. Excellent repeatable sacrifice right there. And we use Binding the Old God to get rid of Urza because I don't want to see his stupid Azorius face around here. You're a war criminal, Urza. Just admit it. We swing in with snakes and golems, dealing five damage to their face. They're able to keep drawing cards off the Maze Mind Tome or just scrying if they'd like to. But I'll be ramping next turn, and since this happens at the start of my main phase, I'll also get the trigger off Lotus Cobra. I also have Fabled Passage for more triggers. They're great. How much mana do I have next turn? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Huh, we can use Turn Timber Symbiosis. Sick. But like, Smeagol right now? I don't need Smeagol. Smeagol's great. Don't need Smeagol right now grab ourselves a forest. I'm going to get something that is a forest, but it's also a swamp. They come and tap anyway, so get that value. A little bit more. Do I think they have a counter spell? They sure as heck might. Since we're getting lands, I put a bunch of landfall stuff in here. I feel like Scoot Swarm is the best piece since it gives you more sacrificables, and also just overwhelming your opponents with Scoot Swarm. What a joy. A Delightful, uh, Delighted Halfling, if I use her there, would not be getting me the uh, Uncounterable, because that was not a legendary spell. All right, three mana up. And we have a Witch King of Angmar. This can be made indestructible, which is huge in case they have non-exiling board wipes. I feel like if you play Gollum and Smeagol on the same board, he has an identity crisis, and they should both be sacrificed to the Legends rule. This is a one of the ring wraiths, uh, but it's not the Nazgul in its name alone, which means that you can have 10 Nazgul in your deck. You can technically have more, but I'm not running the 11th Nazgul that's in Arena. Rexian Metamorph. Are you going to turn into a Witch King of Angmar? Good choice. Let's see if we can get rid of this. I don't have that much exiling removal. Hmm, a little bit of death touch in my life. I have a Smeagol. I have a Haunt. Yeah, I'm just spitting everything out here. Mmm, Vivian sounds great! And also, thank you, Elis Didier, for the seven-month resub. Thank you for using your Prime and supporting my channel. There we go. Empty-handed. Does that mean I won't be able to make this indestructible? Yup! That is exactly what it means. Doesn't matter, swing it in. If I was to hold on to any of those, it would have been the Haunt of Dead Marshes, since you can discard it and bring it back. Oh no, I'll have to sacrifice one of these? How terrible. I want my creatures dead. These all have Death Touch, so they could block, sacrifice something. Ah, uh, the ring tempts me. The ring tempts me even more! Who here wants to be a ring bearer? Smeagol, you're a ring bearer. Cool. And now... Onto Dead Marshes is the ring bearer. They didn't keep it alive. They didn't discard a card there. Pre 
three snakes! Time for a board wipe? Probably, I played right into one. Oh, goodbye. They even exiled my graveyard where all my tasty bits are. Smeagol returned to the command zone, and it's time for Vivian. Vivian makes me loads of tokens. By the way, I do have the Home of Storm Giants, but I don't have a second blue source right now. Go ahead and give something with Vigilance! An Oracle of the Alpha. Gonna put the Power Nine into their deck. What a mistake that is. Tameshi, if they hadn't exiled their graveyard, would let them do uh, artifacts and enchantments coming back from the grave. I'll swing in with my sweet little beast. I'll make something with reach. And here's Smeagol! Dragger's Familiar discounts their historic spells, artifacts, sagas, and legends. Oh, hey, Sheldred. Hey, Sheldred. I wonder what else I got in here. One moment. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, we also got some Nazgul's out here? I'm just out here enjoying the various choices of cards I have. Let's go with Demon's Disciple to start. Happy to sacrifice Smeagol since we have enough mana to bring him back. And I don't need their lands. They go down to three. Here comes Ugin, who can't be effed. Can destroy one of my colored permanents, of which I have four. Or could just make a blocker. Nope, they're killing Sheldred because card draw causing pain for them seems bad. But we have two three threes. We're swinging in for lethal anyway. GG Urza. Only two lands, but oh, look at the beautiful black cards I have. If I can get a third mana source, or a golden, I can just keep paying the six. But we're up against Muldrotho, the Grave Tide. Muldrotho lets you recast things from a graveyard, which is bad for Smeagol, because we're filling up their graveyard. Sure, I might be taking lands as I do it, but putting any permanents in their graveyard means I'm essentially expanding their hand. Oh, look at that. On the third land. Good for us. Command Tower. Temple of Mystery, they scry. They already have a reusable land in the graveyard, this obscure storefront. Don't seize! Don't, please don't look. Please don't look at my hand. The two pieces I actually really want to hold on to here are Meat Hook Massacre and Scoot Swarm, because I have a way to indirectly kill my opponent all in one turn if I manage to get those out at the same time. All I have to do is get more than 25, or I guess now 26 Scoots, and then kill them all. And this kills the opponent. They draw Black Market Connections, which is a smart move. They got rid of my ability to, you know, repeatedly make tokens and card draw. Dang. Evolving Wilds. More sacrificed lands going into the graveyard there. What do you want? I'm guessing forest. Ah, I was wrong. It was swamp. Do I want to play Smeagol here? I feel like they'll just kill Smeagol. I'll play Nazgul. I've been tempted by the ring. Wow! Would you look at that? A malevolent hermit. This old man, he was mean. You can also kill him. Hmm. They'll be able to bring him back. Make things uncounterable. I'm feeling a 
I'll just go for Smeagol here. Smeagol, a swing. This is strange because it won't end up exiling it, but I will get more land. Ah, we'll just pass through. They would pay the one blue there. Atris! It's time to play mini game. We get to choose which cards go into graveyard and hand. Well, I, actually, I get to split these into piles. Let's see. Goif in a land. I'm going to do Goif or Swift of Boots in a land. Would you care for a Goif? Goif in the graveyard. Especially with a commander like Muldrotha, you just take whatever you want right then and there. Now they got booties! I imagine they'll get blue so they're able to hold up the Malevolent Hermit's ability. Yep. Hello, Atrus. Hello, Hermit. Scootity, scootity, scoot. I'm going to sacrifice a creature. Hit Atrus here. Lovant Hermit, would you like to counter this ability? Works for me. I've met my condition of a creature dying, and so the ring will tempt me. Uh, Scoot Swarm, you can be my ring bearer. I now have a legendary Scoot Swarm, which would cause all of my copies of Scoot um, to just be vibing. Having a good time. Yeah, the... um. The legendary part does not get copied here. What, do, hmm, what five drop could they get? Six drop? Worm. Five drop? Mind Flayer. Are you going to steal my scoot? You can assume my Smeagol. They have, in fact, stolen Smeagol. And would you like to put boots on the Smeag? Or boots on the Mind Flayer? They swing in. I'll take four. A creature did die since they used Neoform. Turning Mind Flayer into a legendary. Gonna copy up some of these scoots. And I will sacrifice Plague Crafter. May I have my Smeagol back? Thank you very much. We swing in. That lets me draw and discard. Don't need a board wipe when I have another one in hand. I'm just going for the big scoot kill next turn. If somebody steals your ring bearer, it stops being a ring bearer. Um, it does not remain legendary uh, because it's it's essentially tied to you. It is your ring bearer. Hostage taker, taking the scoot bug, and I assume playing it. You got any lands you want to throw down? They already played a land for turn. They, they needed to in order to get this here. And that's just fine. Here's Deathcap Glade. Smeagol. Swinging in with all of these. It's fine if some of them die. Because, you know, Smeagol. Tempted by the ring. More landfall. More fun. Not quite lethal off a of meat hook right now. But we will get there. Who wants to be my ring bearer? Uh, Scoot Swarm Token. You are my ring bearer. We scoot, scoot, scoot it up. Our Nazgul also grows to 4 5 now. There's a reason why I'm running 9 Nazgul slash 10 Nazgul in the stack. Now, what? Do you want to bring back? They've got a land. They have that Thoughtseize, but they can only play permanents. 
could bring back Malevolent Hermit. Uh, there's a Goif. The Goif wouldn't be too small. Ah, what nice scoots you have. And the Goyf is out. This makes it nice and easy. A tireless provisioner. Landfall. Get some treasures. We have more than 11 scoots. I'll actually do this for X equals one. There are no scoots. Fine way to win. GG Moltrotha. Tulane, teller of tales. All about that ramp, about that ramp. Because whenever you cast a creature, you get to growth spiral. You draw a card and you can put a land into play. Uh, right now I have removal for something that's itty bitty and wee. I have Golem, Ancient Plotter, Skyfisher Spider, and Vraska. I think that these are all going to work together pretty well because if they end up playing a land or elf, I'll bite it. By the way, if you're wondering why is this card in this deck, uh, the answer is for flavor. Purely for flavor. But also, I mean, it's got ring temptations, but it's so cute. It's such a cute disfigure. Disfigure with a nice upside. We now have Gollum on the battlefield. Gollum, patient plotter. Wonders where's his flashes. Oh, he's gonna have to bite some fingies to find it. Swing in for three. And sure, we're going to cause a crisis of mental identity here. Never mind, no, we won't, because they actually countered Smeagol. <laughs> I was going to say, Gollum and Smeagol see each other and just like Spider Man pointing meme. In we go. Go for the Temple of Milady. Nothing I want to be killing off my uh, Skyfisher Spider. A Nazgul on top of the deck. I do like a Nazgul. I'll take it. It is possible that this Chulain deck is not built as round as many uh, small creatures. Tempo and is built more around counter spells. It looks like they do have lots of creatures that just haven't been playing them out. They have a guardian project right now. Nazgul! Do you want to be a ring bearer? Of course you do. You're so cute. Skyfisher Spider and Rasker are both able to destroy Guardian Project. Five mana. Chulain's out. And Chulain's very good at blocking Ring Bearers because he does have only two power. Fabled Passage. Crack this open. I'm going to grab a Black Source. Being asked what I think the strongest colors are in Lord of the Rings for draft. I think black and red people have identified as the most powerful color combination, but I don't actually like have evidence for that myself. Go swing them, swing in with Gollum and the Nazgul. They did not block. Hmm. Interesting. For that, you must die, Chulain. If they blocked, I was hoping to use Golem's Bite to turn that into a tasty one-sided kill here. Golem, Golem did kill in order to become the Ring Bear. He killed his brother. Okay, Circle of Dream Druid. That does tap for mana. Currently only one mana, though. Hmm, blue and white, eh? I eat you. Yum, 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 yum. 
Gollum, you can't just bite elves. It's really mean. Make myself a pirate? Yar. Hashtag yar, hashtag yoho. Swinging for five. I'm going to play Skyfisher Spider. And I'm going to sacrifice this golem to destroy their guardian project. Or maybe their lantern. Guardian project. Let's go with this. I'm going to turn my pirate into a ring bearer. Don't question it. It's normal. Ooh. Ooh, to sacrifice a creature and bring him back? Yes. I'll sacrifice my ring bearer even. We might not have gotten to use Smeagol to steal any lands this game, but I feel like we're doing quite a bit. Oh, the ring tempts me. Even though uh, it is exiled, we say farewell, goodbye, adios. I'll make a pirate. Hashtag Yoho, hashtag Yarhar. Are you gonna counter it? A squash away? Fine. Kami of Bamboo Groves. I don't even have an extra land in hand. We're just getting this out. That's going to be game. Our opponent had too many counter spells and not enough creatures. Which is fine for me. Because we had things that could come back from the grave. GG Tulane. The Ladriel of Lothlorien. I've got a nice curve here of a one, sort of a two, a four, and a five. Hello there, Gladriel. Gladriel is about scrying, because whenever you scry, you may reveal the top card of your library, and if a land was revealed this way, you put it into the battlefield tapped. That's going to add up to a pretty strong amount of ramp. Now, they do have that second part, I, I should mention, of you can also have the ring tempts you, choose a creature other than Gladriel, and that causes scry. Great. That doesn't actually do anything most of the time. I feel like there's a little bit of Tempted by the Ring that they're going to be playing, but most of the repeatable Tempted by the Ring is not in blue or green. It's in my colors, black. Ooh, speaking of which, I choose black on this card. But I like to scry. I would like to scry. Agadim's Awakening, not really what I want right now. This is an amazing Magali piece. Probably my favorite, like, portrait artist in Magic. Lost Isle Colin. Whenever they scry, they get a verse counter, and you can exile this to take an extra turn. That's cool. Th this is a Smeagol. He finds me dirt sometimes. He's really cute. Just look at him! Yes, there is an uh, Elrond who, if you have two creatures enter the battlefield on the same turn, will have the ring tempt you. Also gets you repeatable scry, so works very well with Galadriel. I think that's the blue Elrond, since there are multiple Elrons. Hmm, Yagmoth, want to help me fill my board up? Want to have a creature die during my turn? So Smeagol is tempted by the ring. Let's make uh, let's make Smeagol our ring bearer for now. We stole a snow covered island. Sweet. That means I can play the Great Henge next turn. Salfir and Void. That causes them to scry, which will trigger Galadriel and Lost Isle Cowling. Hopefully I'm able to get rid of this before they take the extra turn and draw, like, seven cards. One, two, three! For Uro! Uro gets them another land. 
And I still have one, two, three, four, five mana in search of greatness. Sweet. That's scry. At the beginning of their turn, they either put a permanent into play or they scry. And joint exploration also scries. Look at you ramping. Thankfully, in the Golgari colors, we do have options for getting rid of enchantments. We have some destroy non creature or a non land permanence, and hopefully, I find one. Starting out with the Henge. I'm going to use that for the Kami of Bamboo Groves and Elvish Mystic. I'm actually going to lead with the Elvish Mystic. Since it gives me another chance to draw land here. Nope. Any lands? You want to draw the card first. Aha! A land! We can use that land. Or we could just throw it in. Um, we're going to sacrifice some stuff. Make your monsters shrink. Kill them completely. Don't mind me, just drawing cards. And we will be tempted by the ring once more. Um, Yogmoth, you can be my ring bearer now. Wow. We milled Time Warp. Thank goodness we milled Time Warp. So that did fill up the graveyard a little bit more for Uro. But it means that there's not a time warp being cast. I like not a time warp being cast. Big fan of not a time warp being cast. They've got four mana still up. Nissa For X equals one. I'm not bothering with the delighted halfling. A scry two. That's going to help with you and you. They scry again. This is up to six now. I need to find removal for this. I'll dump a bunch of creatures onto the battlefield next turn. Sacrifice them if it isn't enough. All right, let's start with this dog. Uh, Yogmoth with this dog means uh, some good stuff. Some good stuff. We're able to uh, dig very deep into our deck with these two out, even with the Great Henge kind of interrupting it. Hmm... Too much green. Still looking for some removal for that. Failing to find. Hmm. I don't think we're going to find it here. Drop Temple of Milady. Not underestimate my fortitude. I am actually going to sacrifice Smeagol. go. You took your sweet time, didn't you? I don't even have to kick it. Bam! Get out of here. Whew. The dig. Thank you for your candid responses to my questions. 
Also appreciate your deck building explanations. I've gotten significantly better at drafting and standard since watching you. Thanks again. Well, thank you so much for the sub. It's a girl 208. I appreciate that a lot. I also appreciate how many cards I have to discard here. I know it's my go. I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. I have to discard six. It's a lot of cards. Do you know how hard it was for me to find removal for your stupid extra turn card? It was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. You're gonna scry again? I'm gonna kill Gladrail. Yo, 27 Yo. months. That's like two years. Oh, wait. <laughs> Jesse Doyle! Thank you for the 27 month resub. Yeah, it's almost a year. No, I get it. I was moving pretty slowly during that turn because I was trying so hard to find the thing. And I get that. Oh, hey, Ulamog. Oh, thank goodness I have another piece of exile. So it looks like they're going for Young Wolf and the Great Henge. I'll sacrifice Young Wolf in response. Draw more cards. Hey, speaking of drawing cards, would you like one? Here you go. Nissa. This is able to animate a land so she can um, cause bodily oh, harm right, to herself. <laughs> El Jango, they give it the 14 month resub. We draw, we drop. I'll drop a uh, land war elves. I'll play a land for turn. She gets a little bit of proliferate. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna put some pressure on that arrow. Crimson Heart kicking off a, a hype train with a sub. Thank you for the three month resub. Heck yeah. Thank you, everybody who's supporting my channel. It is very appreciated. Nissa says, Yeah, thank you. So here comes Uro, they will draw a card, maybe get another land into play. They certainly don't have a problem with uh, mana. They have plenty of lands. Can they even replay Galadriel? One, two, three, four, five, six. They're seven. They can, they can replay Galadriel. And this only destroys non-legendary creatures, of which there are currently zero on the battlefield. Who do I want to bring back? That Demon's Disciple is looking real tasty. Priest as well. Ooh. A land. Death Sprout. This will be exiling their graveyard next turn. Gets me more landfall triggers for Nyssa. We're gonna bring back a nice friend. How about a Nazgul? Cruelty of Gix. Check out their hand. They only got two cards in there. I just like clicking buttons though. And they're going to leave because I'm really good at clicking buttons. Wait, what did you have? They had an extra turn card. This person, by the way, they're taking all these extra turns. We build an extra turn card. It's in exile there. We got rid of a second one, a third. Simic's more than just extra turns. You also get to play big boys and ramp. GG, Galadriel. Need more elves. Is magic a difficult game to get into? To get into, no, but to master, absolutely. <gasps> Sam! This is actually my first time playing against the Samwise. I'll keep this hand. It's not amazing, but it seems pretty good to me. Samwise Gamgee. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, get food. You can sacrifice food to bring back historic cards from your graveyard to hand. Sam, I wish that I could eat at your table. Sam is the real hero of Lord of the Rings. Everybody knows it. He's the sweetest, best boy. I watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy again. Voxy watched it with me. And the whole time we were just like, Sam, we love you. 
<laughs> Damn, you're the best boy! Our opponent's name, by the way, is Hero Protagonist. They know who the main character is, because it's Sam. You want to hear more about Sam? Okay, um... Per my own headcanon, he's a bisexual king and has a strong platonic love for Frodo. Actually, that's that's in the book. The strong platonic love, that's there. We all love Samwise Gamgee. Time for more food. A paradise druid! That's an on-token creature that gets them some more food. Wait a minute. Hero protagonist is from the book Snow Crash. Oh, thank you for knowing things, people in the chat. Have a Smeagol. Manative! Oh, okay. I did get got by a Manative. We've got our Morb and our Snake out on the battlefield, though. Throw in a hissy fit. more food, and now if a creature manages to hit me and deal some damage, they'll draw a card. I don't think Sam would have a mana tithe. He's not loyally folk. No, you don't want a morb with me, opponent? I'm going to play Vraska, and I'm going to plus to make a pirate. We could have also Meat Hook Massacred to wipe out some of our opponent's creatures, but... Hashtag Yoho, hashtag Yarhar. Toski will have to attack, but we have some very good blockers out here for Toski. A 1-3? My god. Samwise will also be able to bring back historic cards from their graveyard. They don't have any historic cards right now, but we'll probably find some. What happens when an animated vehicle becomes the ring bearer? So this actually happened to me uh, before in a draft. I made Grand into my ring bearer. Grand will... Well, he's already legendary. It's already legendary, but it um, gains a legendary. It gains all of the things for being a ring bearer. And then at end of turn, when it stops being a creature, it loses ring bearer status. And you no longer have a ring bearer. Oh, hey, John, John. This is a Johnny Sleeper Agent. I'm gonna put some plus one, plus one counters on things. By the way, Aragorn, company leader. I just saw them play that. Um, whenever you put one or more counters on Aragorn, you put one of each on another creature. So they're putting a plus one, plus one counter on Aragorn and getting another on Toski. They have also got this Gilded Goose able to deal some damage now. I'll chump block with this... Pirate. Took damage from the goose, so they get to draw a card. And they do have something with one power, so I can't get any unblockable damage here. Trying to decide if I want to go for killing a Johnny. Don't question it. We morb. Have I ever tried reading Elvish? No, not really my jam. All right, rather than going for a Johnny, I'm just going for the whole damn board. And behold, an elf! I had a line there of using a Nazgul to be tempted by the ring, so I would have one unblockable damage, so I could kill a Johnny. A plus? That is not a creature on top of their deck. It's a Relic of Legends. I feel like they don't need to keep it, because they already have a good amount of mana. And so many food! 
Speaking of food, they can use that food with Samwise to bring one of these legends back to their hand. Nice, Sky Sovereign. Kills my elf. I played Delighted Halfling. Oh, how delightful. Going to destroy the Sky Sovereign. Play Old Man Willow and an Nazgul. I'll have the Nazgul get tempted by the ring. I can use uh, Old Man Willow to sacrifice creatures or tokens, such as the tokens Vraska produces, to give another creature minus two, minus two. Like you, Sam. Or you, Elvish Mystic. Let's see, they currently have five food. Food feed to feed food. You can use that to bring back some legendaries. I make a pirate. I play a land. I am shocking it in. Attack Old Man Willow. Sacrificing this token and killing Sam. I'm sorry, Sam. You want to bring back two legends from your graveyard? Looks like they're grabbing Aragorn. And Sky Sovereign! I feel like they're, they're gonna want a chump block here. They could let a Johnny die. And I'll take out a Johnny. get tempted by the ring once more. It'd be better to be tempted when we have Smeagol out. But I just want to make sure that this has more than three toughness. Oh, and does it ever! That way it will survive the Sky Sovereign's onslaught. Yes, let him cook. Three damage straight to Vraska. Here comes Aragorn. Katilda, by the way, can put plus one, plus one counters on Aragorn, which would then put plus one, plus one counters onto more stuff. Which is cool. At least I think it's cool. Projecting Vraska while they have that Sky Sovereign out, not really going to be a thing. I'm going to start swinging in. Doot, doot, doot. We draw. Eaten alive. Over Nyssa. I don't really need Nyssa. I'm going to drop her. I will sacrifice this pirate. Give minus two, minus two to Katilda. Now, do you want a crew? Oof, no, they're taking the, all the damage. Mm, to get a land to exile, to get a land to exile. What if we did both? I could sacrifice one of my Nazgul. But no, we're about to be tempted by the ring. I think that it's better to just let Smeagol die to Sky Sovereign. Wait, things are happening. What what is happening? Oh, they're they're wondering if they need to crew. Now nah, I'm gonna get rid of one of my Nazgul. Uh, I'm gonna sacrifice a creature to exile Aragorn. Meat hook massacre drains them for one. And Smeagol, who's just such a helpful little fella. Got 
got me a fabled passage. Hand empty. They can crew the Sky Sovereign and kill Vraska, but if they do, they're dead to damage on the board. But I think they're going to do it. Call it revenge. Say good game. They have no food to eat. And we swing in with old man Willow and the Nazgul. Cup bam. GG hero protagonist. Aragorn, the uniter. Look at all those colors he's got. Four to five. I have really great cards in here, but unless I have the right mana, I don't think I can keep this hand. I do not have a third land and I don't have any black. This is going to be a little bit better, I think. I am not able to do anything on turn one, even though we have this Kami of Bamboo Groves, but turn two, Jadar coming out is great. Jadar, I would actually say, is an all-star card for our Smeagol because you create these zombies that you can guarantee the death of just by attacking in. Because once they attack in at the end of combat, they are sacrificed. Hello there, selfless savior. Good bit of protection. I didn't get a third land. Tragedy. Despite all my mulligans, I'm still left without a third land. Fine with me. Swinging for two. Face down that dog. And check out Aragorn the Uniter. If you haven't seen this card yet, he's all about casting spells of colors. Is that an easy thing to accomplish? Absolutely! Spells of colors? Of what colors? Of colors. That's all you need. If you're casting a white spell, you get a token. If you cast a blue spell, you scry. A red spell, you burn your opponent's face. And a green spell, you make a creature absolutely humongous until end of turn. All of these combined make Aragorn just a nasty, nasty creature to deal with. And he's very much kill on sight. Oh, they're rampant, sacrificing a land and probably getting a red source and a blue source. Um, that's just my guess. Ah, no, blue and white. Either way, that does line them up for Aragorn. I was just trying to guess which colors they're predominantly in. They found red. There we go. Is it time for Aragorn? Yes, it is. They can protect him with the selfless savior. And this isn't quite what I wanted, but I will take it. Uh, we've got Woe Strider here. And I'm going to use Woe Strider to scry to a green source of mana. Isn't that right, Woe Strider? Isn't that right, Woe Strider? I did not find green. There was a land. A black land. That's not what I wanted. I want green. For Smeagol! A Fleet Foot Dancer, that is three of Aragorn's colors, which means I get burned. They give plus four, plus four to a creature, and... I get a human token. It's also like a cool card. It's got Trample, Life, Link, and Haste. The Fleet Foot Dancer, I'm going to let that go through. I am going to block Aragorn and sacrifice. I also think Fleet Foot Dancer is very strong, in part because you can give that plus four, plus four, and with all those other abilities, it gets real good. Would you stop? That was another swamp. Black Mana! Thank you so much, Eddie Tora, for the seven month resub. White, they're going to get another token. This is going to give Ward One to their legend. Excuse me, don't mind me. You know, here, I'll swing in. I'm going to put full control mode on. Since I suspect they will not block. Okay, they did block. I'll sacrifice it. Killing one of those, important. Finding green mana? This is this is getting silly. This is getting silly! Ophia Mancer, make me a death touching snake. Snakes. If I don't have a snake at the start of a turn, I get a snake. Gandalf! White Rider! Giddy up. 
Whenever you cast a spell, creatures they control get plus one plus one until end of turn and they scry. Nice. Hello, would you like to attack into my snake? I'll take it. And by it, I mean a lot of damage. Would you like to sacrifice your dog? No? Okay. Cool. 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 I have done it! Green mana! Took a while, didn't it? I'm gonna sacrifice this snake. Don't mind me. Nope. I'm going to sacrifice this since I already have too good of a blocker for it. No. And we pass back to them. Who would like to be my ring bearer? Alfia Mancer, you can be my ring bearer. Oh, I was about to say, is it a green source? It's not. It's a red, white, and blue source. I tried. Broker's Ascendancy, gonna be putting counters upon all these creatures. And you also get the white, blue, and green triggers. Which is a lot. Also Gandalf triggers, because they cast a spell. Blocking is going to be difficult for me here. Hi there. Yes, your your cards are very scary. Do you attack? I only have 10 life left. And other than this snake, I'm not really good at blocking. Oh, in they go. All right, so uh, we're gonna pass the blockers here. Snake on Aragorn. Shump block on human soldier. Smeagol on Gandalf. I suspect they'll sacrifice the selfless savior to protect Aragorn. Nope. They want to bring me to one life. Move my commander to the command zone. trying to decide if I want to keep it there for the Woe Strider or not. Gandalf. Going to show up on the fifth morning. Nope. Keeping it in the grave. Everybody gets bigger. We got a Lair of the Hydra here. That Fleet Foot Dancer could definitely gain me some life. But not enough life. Nazgul? The ring tempts me. I'm going to turn this zombie into a ring bearer. So when it attacks in, it will let me discard and draw. Got another Nazgul here. Get that straight out of my face. And unfortunately, I think we're just dead. They got more attackers than I've got blockers. Even though I have such a lovely little death touch and snake. Actually, we have the same amount, but like... There we go. I was going to say, I think they have some multicolored haste cards. Like this one! Drago and Ojitai swinging in for the win. GG, Aragorn, the Uniter. Our opponent's drinking gins and tonics. Playing Feather the Redeemed. Nice. Feather is all about casting spells on your own creatures. 
I'm a big fan of this hand, how it has things in it. Removal and such other things. Feather, though, uh, you're going to see a lot of prowess triggers, things that get you something when you target your own creatures. And oftentimes protective spells and cards like Reckless Rage, which hit both yours and your opponent's creatures. Hi, I'm Kami of Bamboo Groves. I'm the same size as you, Dragon Rage Channeler. Defiant Strike, getting plus one, plus O, oh, and surveilling, and drawing a card. They kept whatever card it was on top of their deck. This card has such a wild animation. It's so extra. Sure, I'll block. Creature off the battlefield. I'll take it. If I play Smeagol, will he just die? If I play Smeagol, will he just die? If I play Smeagol, will he just die? Don't hurt my sweet little Smeagol. He's just trying to be helpful. Just look at him. He's so sweet. He just wants to help you find the way. <gasps> Smeagol lives! I'm gonna play this dog. <laughs> and a Nazgul. Who wants to be my ring bearer? Nazgul can be the ring bearer. I have done it. I have stolen Needle Verge Pathway. They have a Faithless Looting now in their graveyard. We also milled Monastery Mentor. I'm happy to see that gone. Uh, Amaria's Call and a couple other cards. I didn't swing in with Smeagol because I didn't want to trade with Gutter Snipe. It's Feather! Are you going to play a land so you can hold open some protective spells, though? Red. Red is not really the protective type. They're going to use that for a Ryle to draw a card. The Ryle will be put back into their hand. And I did get burned by that gutter snipe. I'm going to play Sanguine Brushstroke. And then use Eaten Alive. We're going to sacrifice a creature, our young wolf. Young wolf. He is young and no wolf. And it comes back because it has Undying. Since we sacrificed a creature, the ring will tempt me at the end of turn. Uh, young wolf, would you actually like to be a ring bearer? We steal land, Fury Calm Snarl. Thanks, Grelf. You're so cute in the graveyard. Shadow of the Skulls! Nice! Four cards in exile. They can be cast this or next turn, or played if some of them happen to be lands. Any lands? Sort of a land. Electrostatic field, more pings. Invasion of Gobahan exiles a card from my hand. Then all right. How's about a Nazgul? We are tempted by the ring. Young Wolf, continue to be my ring bearer. And another Nazgul. Just going hard here. Stealing more lands. And making a gigantic pile of beasts. Or should I say wraiths? I'm going to swing in with everything here. They'll have to be blocking or they'll take a ton of damage. We already know what four of the cards they have access to. That's game. GG. Frodo Sauron's Bane. A little guy who tries to make himself unblockable so he can win the game off an alternate win condition. Uh, I think this hand's okay, but I am going to mulligan. And I like this hand a lot more. We've got some early ramp off Kami of Bamboo Groves. we got Jadar and Ophiomancer. We are chock full of uh, an ever-ending source of creatures. So Frodo Sauron's Bane probably coming out on turn one since he's a one-cost creature. And he also, just like ours, cares about being tempted by the ring. I'm going to play Jadar before I play the Ophiomancer since it does give me a way to automatically have a creature die. If I attack with this zombie, the zombie dies. Hey, Frodo. 
Oh, bye, Jadar. I'm, st I'm still going to attack with this. Because I want your lands. Hmm, the Kami of Bamboo Groves or Smeagol? I'll make the Kami my ring bearer, sure. Um, that means that if they upgrade this, turning him into a scout from a citizen, he'll be a 2-3 and they won't be able to block the Kami of Bamboo Groves. And I stole Castle Lockwain, which is a very, very helpful land for me to get. Nice, Tireless Provisioner. Gets me treasures. I am going to attack with the Kami of Bamboo Groves, knowing that they can block and kill it. Because if it dies, Smeagol gets tempted by the ring, and I can make my Ophiomancer this or this. Let's make the Ophiomancer into our ring bearer. That gets me a landfall trigger, which means a tireless provisioner gives me food for thought or a treasure. I'm gonna go for a treasure. And we get a snake! And snakes are really, really good at blocking Frodo's! <gasps> what do you need all that mana for? They have six mana. War of the Last Alliance. That's going to get them two legendary creatures. And then a double strike and ring temptation. And double strike is pretty good with Frodo if he's upgraded. Because he does get uh, on hit. Combat damage. Ring tempts you. Or winning the game after ring tempts you. Oh, cool dog. So they have uh, two protections now for Frodo. I'm playing this forest. Treasure. I'm going to use Castle Lock Queen. I'm not going to play this first. We stole Cabal Stronghold. We actually have so little black mana here. I'm going to start by swinging with my snake here. It's a good little snake. You know, they have a Ratadrabic, which can give them a loop. If they go for a uh, Ratadrabic and then... I can't remember who it is. There's a guy. We're going to sacrifice the snake. We're going to destroy War of the Last Alliance. And, uh, sure, here's a Tangled Florahedron. Why not? Tangled Florahedron, would you like to be my ring bearer? Ratadrabic? When you turn legendaries dying, including ring bearing legendaries, into a thing that comes back. Hmm, that means that they can uh, have some fun there. I'm going to lead with this snake attack and also Tangled Florahedron. Ooh, Binding the Old Gods. Don't need that. This is a ring bearer. You can only block it with the Selfless Savior or with Frodo. Ah, but now you'll have to sacrifice Frodo. It will come back, though, as a 2-2. Two, two. But it's a non-legendary currently. Once they're tempted by the ring, though, it will be legendary. Hey, check this out. Bam, a zombie. The ring tempts me. I will make this zombie into a ring bear. And we stole positive heroes. That's actually a very good land to have.
and our opponent leaves. Because we have a Liliana, we have things with one power, so it's really hard to get around them unless you get some unblockable ability. And uh, yeah, she will win us the game. That's just what she does. Liliana's a good card, as it turns out. GG. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. I hope you enjoyed my Juicy Fish. I mean, my Smeagol Helpful Guide deck. This deck was really, really fun to play. I'm a big fan of this hybrid Rinks Tempts You plus Bulgari Sacrifice, and I think that you'll enjoy it too if you want to play it. As a bonus, a lot of this deck is on commons because we have so many copies of Nazgul. By the way, I have these singleton out as the different nine arts. You do not need to do that in your deck. If you would like to, you can actually just craft four copies of one Nazgul, and that gives you all nine copies for your deck. So if you're short on wild cards, you know, go crazy with the Nazgul. I hope you enjoyed this video. As a warning, uh, videos are going to be kind of sporadic in the next few days. Uh, I'm currently traveling for work. Yes, I'm going to be working on something, which you will find out about when it is finished. But when I come back, I'm sure I will be recording lots more videos, especially featuring these fun new commanders. If there's a commander you'd like to see from Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth, let me know. So far, all of our commanders have been ones suggested by people in the YouTube comments. So if there's something you want to see, you should let me know so I can build it. Again, thank you so much for watching and have a brutal day.